All right, so next we're gonna look at how the Fed influences interest rates in the economy. So um, what the, one of the main purposes of the Federal Reserve Bank, the Fed, is uh, that they seek to alter consumption, uh, investment, and in essence, total aggregate expenditure by altering the rate of growth of the money supply. Um, and they do this by basically indirectly affecting interest rates. Um, and there are four major tools at its disposal that it can use in um, engaging in monetary policy. So the first is that it has uh, what are called open market operations. So this is what we were talking about with the Federal Open Market Committee, um, where it determines whether to buy or sell bonds, government securities. Um, it can also change the reserve ratio, which we learned about in the last chapter, right? Um, we learned about in the last chapter, the fractional reserve banking system and how the required reserve ratio can change how um, a Fed, uh, uh, the central bank's policy actions affect the money supply. So that's one way that it can affect the money supply. It can manipulate the reserve ratio. Um, it can also change the interest rate paid on reserves, which is sort of the um, it's the interest rate that it gives banks when banks deposit money with the Federal Reserve. Um, and then it can also change the discount rate, which is the rate at which banks can lend to one another. All right, so open market operations. Like I said, this is when the, uh, the Federal Reserve um, buys or sells government securities, bonds, uh, in an open market setting. So that's why it's called open market operations. Um, it's, it's a market that anyone can participate in. So if you wanted to buy bonds, um, you would do so in the bond market. And this is the open market that the Fed uh, engages in. Um, and so, like I said, the Fed purchases and sells government bonds that are issued by the U.S. Treasury in, in an open market operation. And this causes a change in the price of bonds. So basically, it's um, it's manipulating the either the supply or the demand for bonds. Um, and when it does that, it alters and affects the price of bonds, which has an inverse relationship with interest rates, which we'll talk about. Okay, so for example, um, when the Fed sells bonds, it's basically increasing the supply of bonds. Um, and when it increases the supply of bonds by selling more, bringing them to the open market and providing more for sale, it increases the supply, which brings the price of bonds down. Uh, when it buys bonds, it basically is affecting, uh, it's, it's decreasing the supply of bonds for sale. Um, so in that sense, it increases prices. Um, sort of an equivalent way of thinking about it rather than having an effect on the supply when they buy is that actually they're affecting the demand, um, increasing the demand when they buy more bonds, which also increases the price. So you can kind of look at it either way, but it, the ultimate result is the same. The price of bonds goes up when they buy bonds. All right, so to understand how the price of bonds translates into an interest rate change, uh, let's go over an example. Okay, so let's suppose that you pay $1,000 for a bond um, that pays $50 per year in interest. Um, what this means is that the bond yield, the percent yield on that bond is 5%. It gives you $50 per year for a $1,000 investment. And so what's the return on your investment? It's 5%. You get 5% uh, uh, return on your investment. Okay, so that's the bond yield. Now suppose you pay $500 for the same bond. So the interesting thing about bonds is that they're, um, the amount that they pay you every year doesn't change. So the interest that it pays is always $50. But the price changes, right, depending on the supply and demand conditions in the bond market. So in this case, the price has gone down. What happens to the interest rate or the yield? Well, it goes up, right? So there's an, there's an inverse relationship between the price of bonds and the interest rate or the, or the um, bond yield. Same, same thing, basically. Uh, 
Okay, so they're inversely related. They move in opposite directions. So when the, when the Fed buys bonds, it increases prices, which means that yields, interest rates, go down. And then when it sells bonds, prices go down and interest rates go up. Okay, so that's, that's how the Fed is able to manipulate interest rates sort of indirectly by buying and selling bonds. Um, now, the market price of existing bonds is inversely related to the rate of interest in, in the economy. So what I just described to you, right? So uh, again, the implications of this are that when the Fed engages in an open market sale, right, it goes to the open market and sells bonds. It is increasing the supply of bonds, which drives the price of bonds down. And the price of bonds go going down increases the interest rate. Um, and then vice versa, when the Fed um, purchases bonds, the price goes up and interest rates go down. Okay, so again, this is how the Fed is able to manipulate interest rates through the open market operations, buying and selling bonds.